Hi, this is Wendy Galernter of Pace Turf, and today I'm going to discuss a kind of an interesting uh, diagnostic problem that we ran into, courtesy of Jim Houston of Woodbridge Country Club in Northern California. Jim can always be depended on to uh, give us some challenging diagnostic questions, and, and this one was no different. And what he was observing is a problem that he's had a few years in a row that uh, follows soon after his, the fall aeration on his Poa annua greens. And what he sees, and I'll, I'm going to hold up a, a plug of what he's seeing, is um, very small areas of dead turf. Uh, they look like they're occurring in the aeration holes and uh, yet they're, they're kind of randomly scattered uh, around the green. They're, they're not, uh, they're not uh, in every single aeration hole. These patches of dead turf are scattered randomly uh, around the green. They're not in every aeration hole, as you can see. And in fact, uh, there's relatively few of them on each green. When we first started looking at these samples, we thought the damage might be due to black cutworms, um, since their damage frequently also shows up after aeration, due to feeding on turf foliage in and around the aeration holes. But the damage we were seeing in Jim's sample didn't seem to be the result of foliar feeding, and, and also we couldn't find any cutworms in his sample. When we probed around uh, and looked under the dissecting microscope under the area of dead turf, uh, however, a, a, a kind of an interesting creature popped up. And at first it kind of looked like a sawed webworm, uh, but on further examination, we saw it is much skinnier or thinner uh, than a sawed webworm is. And more importantly, um, it has a lot of hardened or sclerotized plates on some of its segments, particularly on the uh, head and the segments uh, immediately behind the head. That kind of hardened cuticle of, of a worm-like insect uh, is a real characteristic feature of an insect known as a wire worm. Wireworms are the larval or the immature stage of click beetles, and a lot of you um, may remember click beetles from when you were kids. They're kind of fun to play with because when you disturb them, they'll turn a somersault in the air, and they're able to do that because of a little click mechanism uh, that's present on their thoracic segments. These adults are, are entertaining, and they're not uh, really pests of, of any uh, crop plants. But the larvae, the wireworms, are in, uh, big pests in agriculture on corn, potatoes, and uh, many other crops. And they feed underground on roots, tubers, and underground stems and stolons, pretty much any part of the plant uh, that's underground. They can tunnel their way up into the crowns of plants sometimes as well. We rarely see them causing problems on turf, uh, but we find that golf courses that are near agricultural operations, uh, especially when there's pastures or cornfields, um, or golf courses that are near uh, big weedy fields, and even golf courses that typically flood uh, in the winter. Uh, these seem to be the, the locations that are most susceptible to uh, attack by wireworms. What can you do if you have wireworms on your greens? The answer is, unfortunately, there isn't uh, too much that you can do. Applications of uh, curative insecticides uh, will have very limited efficacy, and that's because the wireworms are able to move through the soil so rapidly and so easily uh, that they actually can physically avoid curative applications of uh, insecticide products. Wireworms also can live for five years or even longer in the soil, so that makes it almost impossible to target the newly hatched susceptible stages of the insect with insecticides. All stages uh, are present at almost all times in the soil, so that makes it another uh, method out of the way. And there's unfortunately no known effective biological controls for wireworms. In crop agriculture, the only effective methods are strategies such as crop rotation 
or pre-plant applications of insecticides, either via seed treatments or through in furrow applications of insecticides. The perennial nature of turf grass systems, though, makes strategies like these uh, impossible. Well, we can't rotate and we can't put pre-plant insecticides down. The good news is that on turf grass, wireworms cause really minimal damage and usually are not worth treating for. If you're one of the unlucky few who do run into serious damage from wireworms, there's some limited evidence that curative applications of products such as Merit, Meridian, Acelaprin, or Arena can reduce populations somewhat, but control is going to be far from 100%. So these are your best options at this point in our understanding of wireworms. We have a bit more information in the link associated with this video, and hopefully we'll have some better uh, news to report about control of wireworms sometime in the near future. Until then, thanks for listening.